You're watching Inside the News with Rowan Dean. There was a terrific article in the Australian newspaper today written by former Labor Senator Stephen Loosley, who's also a writer with The Spectator Australia. The article talked about the strategic need for Australia to mend our relationships with the French following the fallout of the subs deal, the submarine deal and the AUKUS alliance. I caught up with Stephen earlier and started asking him about how we have mended ties with the French in the past following a conflict. It's the uh, 80th anniversary of Australia's war with uh, France, with Vichy France, in, uh, in Syria and uh, the Lebanon in 1941, where Vichy displayed all manner of uh, collaborationist tendencies under Marshal Pétain. Syria and Lebanon were in a critical uh, geographical location given the Allied position in the Suez Canal and uh, in Iraq and, and other places. So British strategy was uh, to uh, work with free French forces, with British Indian, and particularly Australian forces, to, uh, to take Syria and Lebanon from uh, Vichy, which we did. And, of course, the most uh, famous uh, incident in the war so far as Australia was concerned was that uh, Sir Roden Cutler, later a very distinguished governor of New South Wales, won a Victoria Cross and, and suffered grievous uh, wounds. 400 Australians died. But the, the question then needs to be asked, uh, Rowan, is after the war and uh, the disappearance of the Vichy uh, regime, did it take us very long to rebuild relations with France? The answer is no. Democratic France revived and over time uh, with newly democratic Germany, the, uh, the European Union uh, was built. So it's very much in our interest to remember our history and Absolutely. to think these issues uh, through, uh, through clearly. I think it's in our interests and, uh, and France's interests for relations to be rebuilt over time. It's not going to be easy, but we should make a start. Now, Stephen, uh, you mentioned in your article, full disco disclosure, that you serve as the deputy chair of uh, Thales Australia, which is a significant shareholder in the Naval Group, which was originally commissioned to build Australia's new submarines. And you also serve on the board of the European Australian Business Council. So, uh, so you're, uh, you, you, you clearly have knowledge and uh, interest in the fact that the French submarine deal was cancelled. And clearly, uh, you know, you, you speak as well from a historic point of view, why we need to rebuild uh, those relationships. How easy will it be? Uh, we do have great uh, relationships with the French from other <laughs> wartime activities. The great French Prime Minister, Georges Clemenceau, you point out, when he addressed Australian troops in July 1918 after the Battle of Hamel, he told them that they had astonished the world and that Australian aspirations and ambition, uh, you write, need to be of similar stuff again. So. Uh, uh, how can we rebuild those relationships uh, with the current French administration? And how seriously have the French taken the slight against them? Well, dealing with the last part of uh, your question first, I think, Ron, it's important. France has taken uh, uh, this decision, and I don't want to relitigate the reasons uh, uh, for, the, uh, uh, for the shift uh, to the uh, uh, AUKUS uh, strategic yeah. relationship, yeah. Which, which can be uh, readily uh, justified. It was uh, a, a matter of great humiliation uh, for France. And there is considerable anger, not only in the French uh, government, the French political class, but more broadly, simply because the decision for Australia to buy the 12 submarines from France was, was really big news uh, and uh, provoked a lot of favourable commentary. Then when the decision changed and we shifted towards a, a, an Anglo-American alternative, it was also big news, and there's a lot of negative commentary uh, about that. So I think realising uh, this and realising the significance of France for the future, I, I, I point out NATO is critical, the EU is critical, the role of, uh, of France in the Indo-Pacific uh, uh, is critical. So we ought to be prepared to make the gesture and look for a ways to cooperate France will expect Australia to do that, and I think we should be confident enough in ourselves to do that. And uh, it may mean that uh, France 
uh, obliges us to each a, to eat a little bit of uh, of humble pie over time. It's going to be worthwhile if we rebuild the relationship so that uh, actors elsewhere, malign actors elsewhere, can't endeavour to drive a wedge between Australia and uh, uh, not only France, but some of our other democratic partners. And on that last point, uh, Stephen, you refer to the dictators. Uh, presumably you're referring to uh, China, Russia and others. Uh, do you think, do you see them uh, kind of seizing the opportunity to drive a wedge further between uh, two traditionally very close friends, Australia and France? It's inevitable that they will. Uh, if you uh, look at uh, Putin's Russia uh, in Europe, it's forever trying to wedge different uh, parts of the EU and different parts of Europe generally. Look at the pressure on Ukraine uh, at the moment uh, is a classic example. In this part of the world, where we're uh, building new lattice work of relationships, I'm not only referring to AUKUS, but I'm thinking about the Quad, I'm thinking about the uh, reinforcement of ANZUS, there will be uh, those in the region who don't welcome this. We've seen President Xi of China make some uh, negative observations uh, uh, very recently. It's very important in these times that it, the dictators, wherever they may be found, realise that the democracies will bind together and will push back on the kind of aggression and adventurism we've seen of, uh, of recent times. The Dictators tend to follow an old Leninist uh, uh, policy of pushing hard with a bayonet into soft flesh until they strike metal. Now, that was as true of uh, the Soviet Union under Stalin in the late 40s as it has been of uh, more recent times in other places. I think it's important for the democracies to work very carefully and very closely together and to take uh, issues off the agenda that can divert and distract from that.